yes, councillors and Prognor. Um, I've communicated to staff a form of words. I'd like to have it up on the screen and then seek a seconder. Okay. Thank you. Um, it, look, I want to start by um, emphasising that I don't want to take away from the fact that the business at hand is the adoption of a plan of management for all of Macquarie Park. And I'll start by um, mentioning that, with the exception of what we're about to talk about, I I'd like to say that this um, plan of management is a, a good effort to clarify our goals for what's quite a historic part uh, of our district, the first grant being made in 1795. And it is a complex task when you've got land that has both council and crown components uh, with multiple stakeholders and sensitivities. But my aim in moving this form of words, which is basically the recommendation with two extra points, is to keep alive, if we can, the Paddle Sports Grant and the facility that it will fund. In July 2020, as you've heard, I, I was privileged to stand with our state member Robin Preston, along with Neil Crabb, Gary Baldry, representatives of the Dragon, Boating and Pink Fins communities, as the uh, grant was announced for the construction of a new clubhouse. Mayor Calvert appeared in the photo extolling the wonderful facility that would eventuate, um, and as we've heard, the grant was successful precisely because it brought together so many different groups and yielded so many social goods, not just for sport, but for mental health and in community support. Um, it also offers a neat answer to the tortured debate that we've had in this chamber over the last six months about water safety in Macquarie Park. If it's unsafe to swim at that location, but we don't want to abandon the site, um, this offers a facility that promotes safer forms of water activity using vessels and flotation aids. So I think it's a win there as well. But this grant does typify the kind of conundrum that Council frequently faces where a worthy community group secures a grant from another tier of government without fully engaging Council as the relevant landowner first. Look at the debacle that the grant for a new men's shed devolved into. We have to acknowledge hearing this chamber that community groups are not developers and they are not planning experts. My view and the community's expectation is that council has an obligation to assist community groups in any way they can to ensure that the goals of a grant can be delivered. The community will not tolerate great facilities like this slipping through our fingers because of our inaction or buck passing. Now, much seems to hinge on whether commencement has occurred, which is why I asked Mr Rogers for his opinion. I've been shown correspondence from council officers stating plainly that the applicant couldn't do much on the site before a construction certificate was issued, but what they could do was survey works, pegging out the site and conduct soil testing. So that's what they did. And on the 3rd of May 2022, our state member did not mince her words when she made a Facebook post when she attended an event at the proposed site with Mayor Connolly present, appearing beside her in the photo, saying, finally, shovels in the ground for the Windsor Paddle Sports Club with the plan of management completed and surveyors on site at the commencement of construction of this new facility. Certainly in her estimation, commencement had occurred. I'm told that the DA for this project literally expires tomorrow. I don't think that grant applicants should be put Grant applicants should not be put into a situation where they can't engage in activities that would lock in the grant funding by commencing and then can't afford those activities that would allow the money to flow and then find that council wants to argue with them about what constitutes commencement when I, I come in here believing that nobody wants this to fall over. I'm told that the club were told that they should wait for the plan of management for Macquarie Park. Here it is, one day before the relevant deadline. The plan of management says that stakeholders were adequately consulted. Clearly that wasn't the case, because we are now in danger of losing this, and I don't think that's good enough. And worse, we're in an environment where a new state Labor government are prowling, seeking excuses to cancel grants promised by the previous coalition government. I'm hopeful that what we can resolve tonight will keep this alive, and I'm inviting other views, but I want to acknowledge that the form of words here is less than I'd like, but I've received advice from council staff that we cannot legislate by fiat that commencement has occurred, and we cannot legislate by fiat to grant an extension to the DA, and we're left with this. But I'd like to perhaps end by asking a question of management about what the process is to conclusively declare whether commencement has occurred. Thank you, councillor. I'll refer that to the general manager. 
Um, thank you. Um, th through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, at I guess cutting through all of the, the history on at the point where we're at at the moment and that we have expressed um, to the Paddle Sports Club is that um, on our preliminary legal opinion um, that um, we would have some concerns about the, whether the fact that the works had, had um, commenced because of a series of pre precursor conditions on the relevant development consent that did require a construction certificate to be issued, but have, um, on a couple of occasions now, invited them to provide a legal a legal opinion on that, um, and that in all um, likelihood that, that we would we would rely on that in good faith. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, permit me to press you on that point. Um, I think what Mr Rogers says is the best lens through which we can look at this. We want this to happen. But this is an absolutely critical question because we would have to suspect that if the DA lapses, even if we provided some assistance in the lodgement of a new DA, that DA may need to be assessed under new and more stringent rules, which means that this is dead in the water, no pun intended. So again, I'd like to know whether your concerns amount to a veto on declaring that commencement has occurred. I know we can't legislate this in the chamber, but this is the crucial question. General Manager. Um, I'm not sure I can add much more, Councillor. Uh, literally, our advice said we invite you to obtain independent legal opinion for Council's consideration to confirm that the works proposed in accordance with that DA have physically commenced. Any legal opinion must note and comment on the terms of conditions 1 to 16 of the development consent to include expressly acknowledging that a construction certificate authorising the commencement of the works has not been obtained. Um, in the absence of the persuasive evidence and legal opinion to support that proposition that they had lawfully commenced, um, we, we have the belief that we shall lapse on the 9th of August 2023. To your statement um, that uh, would a, a new development application be dead in the water, um, it would be absolutely far too early to make that judgment. Um, we clearly have updated planning controls that were not in existence at the time um, of the 2015 development application, but that doesn't mean that that application wouldn't be considered on its merits. So um, I think it would be far too early to make that judgment. La last question, and through you again, Madam Mayor. Was there any sense of urgency on the part of council staff perceiving that this handsome grant for a worthy community facility was likely to be lost to us for want of this impasse? General Manager. Uh, I, I think it's probably relevant in that respect to go back to how we found ourselves in this position to begin with. Um, and that the reality of that is that in, in 2013, um, Council actually developed um, a plan of management that included Macquarie Park for um, or a management of seven parks along, along the river. Uh, and that was followed through under the Local Government Act. The plan specifically allowed for the paddle sports canoe facility um, as the idea had been been around and in, in train at that particular point in time. Um, what happened with the plan of management was referred to Crown Lands as part of that process um, and um, but not didn't require a formal approval from Crown Lands at that particular point in time. That was 2013 and then the development application was lodged in 2015 and approved in August 2016. What um, has really and unfortunately transpired in all of this was that a new Crown Lands Act 2016 came into force in 2018 that then required um, the consent of the Crown um, in order to be able to, to proceed through and have a plan of management that was endorsed by the Crown. And that's the, that's the situation that was sort of the, the defining moment at which point um, Council effectively needed to, needed to start again on the plan of management. The unfortunate um, regime that was implemented and imposed uh, on councils at that particular point in time was that council um, had to um, prepare plans of management for over 100 parcels of land um, and was given a princely sum of $50,000 in order to prepare 100 plans of management for all of its parks. So bearing in mind council's resourcing but effectively amounted to a, um, one officer two days a week, um, there was a, a series of prioritisations that happened you, you know, back at that particular point in time, 2020, 2021, um, where uh, an, another a suite of other plans of management were presented to council um, that were at the time deemed to be of a, of a greater priority. Um, and then it wasn't really until about 
um, the middle of 20... There was some work done on 2021 on the Macquarie Pl Planner Management, um, and then it wasn't until March of 2022, so it was probably a lag there of around nine months, where we sort of brought it to a head and engaged um, some, some consultants on board to come and actually push through and finalise it. From that point on... Um, I'm reasonably comfortable that all of those timeframes are perfectly reasonable. Um, unfortunately, preparing plans of management is a costly and time-consuming process, as, as councillors are well, well aware. Um, and this is unfortunately just the, the, the rigour that we have to we have to go through on these types of processes. Madam Mayor and councillors and all the our club supporters. <coughs> Uh, I was going to uh, spend a bit of time telling you about our wonderful club and all our wonderful members and how much they contribute to our community, not just in our club, but uh, at least four of them are current or past Rotarians, two past presidents, two Paul Harris Fellows, which means they have contributed greatly to our community. We're people who go out and get things done. We don't ask for things to be done for us. We do them. Anyway, I'm a positive person and tonight I'm just going to be positive. I'm not going to, and um, I'll just cut out a lot of the things I was going to tell because it was going to take me a lot long time. So I'll just get to the why, how did we get to this point tonight when we should have had a clubhouse built three years ago. I'll just tell you, I'm an honest person so I have no reason to lie or exaggerate about this. The truth is bad enough. Um, the DA was approved in August 2016. The grant was approved in May 2020. It took us three years of applications. That's why um, it took us to that point in time. Um, sorry. August of 2020, we began meetings with the council building department and they were very positive. We continued fortnightly until we were advised that a plan of management was going to be done and to put everything on hold until that was um, prepared. So December came along, nothing had been done. We had another meeting with the council. We were given in writing that the anticipated completion date would be June 2021. July 2021, the correspondence from the council, sorry for letting you down, I've been busy. We haven't even started yet. Things aren't looking very good. I was getting a bit um, concerned. So the new timeline was seven more months. But because Christmas and New Year was in that, it might be extended. I was getting quite concerned by now. I con contacted Robin Preston because it was a state government grant and I thought we would lose it because we weren't meeting a, a time frame. I also was on the Sports Council, so I contacted Sarah McMahon, Les Schiefer, Paul Weigel and also got in touch with Paul Rogers. because I said, I think I need some help to go and see the council and see what we can do. So, but it wasn't until March 2022 we had a meeting with the general manager, by which time we were expecting the once more to have the uh, plan of management completed. Her first sentence was, this is not a priority of ours. We haven't started. Come back in nine months. We'll talk about it. I said, no, that's not going to happen. It's already been twice this has happened. And I said, well, we would have run out of time. So she advised that she would get some more information and get back to us. Two, months later, two weeks later, she hadn't rung, so I called. A couple of days later, she got back to me and just v verbally said, I can't foresee any objections to this. Go ahead with your work. She did not put that in writing. Um, we could not get a construction certificate because the council has not given us landowners' consent. And we can't get the construction certificate because it was $88,000. We don't have the money. The Office of Sport won't give us the money until we get landowners' consent, which the council haven't given us. Because we haven't got the construction certificate, they won't let us go onto the site to do any works. 
so that we can secure the development application. It's just a very bad situation. I'm not a planning expert, but I think we've been deceived and I have looked up the um, deceived and it's mean you, you're given information, you're led to believe things which aren't true and once I think could have been a mistake, twice but three times I really can't believe it. Anyway, tonight I'm asking you to make a judgement on not what's been done, what hasn't been done, what's been said, what hasn't been said what's best for our community and I think I can't see how our community is going to benefit by stopping this building going ahead. It's going to be a great benefit to a lot of people other than just our club. That it? Thank you very much Mr Crabb. I'll just uh, see if there's any councillors with questions. <laughs> Councillor Sheather? <Yep. coughs> how much money was it? <coughs> Um, eight hundred and one thousand dollars, about two hundred and sixteen dollars, <laughs> something yeah. like that. The, the that was from the Office of Sport. Plus, we've been fundraising very hard for the fifteen years. Hmm. I've been in the club, so we could put in a substantial um, commitment, so that to convince the Office of Sport that we were serious about this. Yeah. And at no point did we ever ask the council for one cent. All we have asked from them was permission to build the building. The, the, uh, Just your microphone, please. Um, you've been trying to seek advice, yeah. and I think um, Mr Rogers is going to probably speak on that as well. Um, the, but uh, uh, you indicated to me that you've been seeking legal advice. Has, has that been um, fruitful? I believe it has been because the advice we got from the council was that we, without a construction certificate, we were allowed to do no works at all on the site. So we've started spending all that hard earned money on uh, paying a lawyer and a barrister. And believe me, they're chewing through that money faster than a bunning sausage sandwich because uh, that's where we're going to be spending the next few years just to pay them. But um, they have told us, they gave us a list of things that we are allowed to do on the site and we have completed some of those in the last week. We just didn't have time to do all of them and we didn't want to upset the council too much by doing some of the others, but um, it was certainly contradictory and I did ask the council to put it in writing so it wasn't verbal, verbal information and they specifically said we can do nothing on that site which according to my legal advice, was untrue. And why didn't you go ahead with the CC? As I said, we didn't have close to $90,000 to do it because we didn't have the landowner's consent. Still, after seven years, the council said they asked for it from Crown Lands seven years ago. Still don't have it. And um, in seven days' time... Our grant runs out, and all they're asking for is the uh, landowner's consent, and the council still hasn't given it to us after seven years. And it was going to be... Yeah, so it's one of those things, we can't get the construction certificate because we can't pay for it, because we can't get the money, because we haven't got the approval from the council. Thank you. Any further questions? Councillor lyons -Bucket. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Neil. Um, do, uh, you just answered one of the questions I had, which was you were intending to use the grant money to get the construction certificate. Yes, and yes. it has gone up because greatly since in the three years. Yep. Okay. Uh, the other thing was, what is your actual arra arrangement with the council for to have the facility there at the moment? Do you have a lease with the council? Or, or? We don't have a lease yet. No. no. But that will be something that will be determined in okay. the future. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr Crabb. Is that all? That's all. I've got lots more answers. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all. Thank you very much. Right. Appreciate that. Thanks for your time. I'll now call on the next registered public speaker, Mr Paul Rogers.
Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, Councillors. It's good to be back. 32 years since I was in this place last. Good to be back. Some things have changed, but not much. Uh, but it's good to be back, and it's good to be part of a public forum. I'd like to address three, three aspects uh, in my time. The first is a technical one. Um, Tracy Easterbrook from Council uh, rang me a couple of times this afternoon and asked for verification, and I've got a letter here from uh, Dragon Boats New South Wales confirming my attendance in relation to supporting the paddlers. So I'd like to attend the tender that as requested by Council. Do that. There's a copy there for each of the councillors. The other two aspects I'd like to address is the first in my role as an official uh, from Dragon Boats New South Wales. I'm an accredited uh, official level 2-3, I think I'm at, um, and I'll be more than happy in a moment to talk about the second part of why I'm here so that I can take this very hot jacket off. <laughs> um, Dragon Boating has an interesting cultural background. It started in uh, uh, China some two, two and a half thousand years ago. Uh, there was a love affair, there was a broken heart, and there was obviously a need to paddle up and down the Yangtze uh, in, in terms of the justification uh, of that cultural uh, matter some two and a half thousand years ago. Um, it's been in Australia now for about 25 years. I've been paddling over 10 years. There's three and a half thousand paddlers in New South Wales. There are some 60 clubs in New South Wales. And it's a fast growing sport, and there is hopes that one day it might end, end up in the Olympics. I, uh, as an official, um, the closest paddling here in the Hawkesbury um, is down at the Regatta Centre at Penrith, and there's a club down there called Pendragons, which I was a member of some years ago. Uh, I now paddle out at Lithgow um, at Lake Wallace. Um, paddling is fast fun and furious and it needs um, a community to engage with it. It uh, involves um, both a, a recognised international accredited association right down to individual clubs. And Dragon Boats New South Wales, as you'll see in that letter, if that, it's going around to councillors, you'll see that Dragon Boats New South Wales is supportive of the uh, Windsor Paddle Boat uh, uh, sports uh, club in terms of its endeavour to have a clubhouse uh, with the opportunity of Dragon Boats New South Wales having a presence so I can anticipate more likely as the local representative that we would form a paddle club, uh, Dragon Boat Club here in the Hawkesbury. Uh, a Dragon Boat is some uh, 12 metres long so roughly probably where the mayor to the deputy mayor uh, in distance and you can have a small one with 10 paddlers and you can have a larger boat with 20 paddlers. And the purpose of coming here to the Hawkesbury would be not only to uh, attract paddlers as such, but also to apply the issues of inclusiveness, diversity uh, and equity. And now I want to leave my official role behind and go to the fun part of paddling. So with your indulgence, if I may just go down to my one of my paddle shirts. And this is the paddle shirt that I feel most privileged and honoured to be able to wear. Because five years ago, my wife and I paddled in Florence, part of the Australian, Australian contingent of paddlers. Uh, that's what a dragon boat paddle looks like. And if I may, with your indulgence, pass that around because it actually acknowledges that I was part of the Australian team that went over to Florence as part of the Dragon Breasts uh, team. So, may I? Um, I, might have to, sorry, I might have to say no because I didn't allow Mr Crabb to pass something around. All right, well, you can so. see it and I'm a little bit later if you wish to. The purpose of me wearing this now is to say to you, dragon boating is a fun sport. And there's an opportunity not just only down to go get your feet wet, but you can actually participate and engage in a diverse group of, of individuals um, who paddle both locally and internationally. And paddling overseas with a, a group of Australians, there was 400 Australian uh, men and women, um, and it was a privilege to be part of the Australian contingent. We would have a dragon boat club here in the Hawkesbury 
Dragon Boats New South Wales has indicated in that correspondence the provision of two boats, indicated the provision of paddles, has indicated the provision of um, and, ancillary items, life, life jackets, etc. Part of some of the consideration is, is this proposal a sham? It's not a sham from the Dragon Boats New South Wales perspective. Windsor Paddle Sports is a genuine organisation with genuine members, many of them here present here tonight. Dragon Boats New South Wales acknowledges that organisation and wants to be a part of that organisation by bringing dragon boating uh, to the Hawkesbury. And I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Mr Rogers. Are there any questions, councillors? Councillor Zamprogno. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you, Mr Rogers, for coming and stirring us with the, the virtues of, of dragon boating. I think it really would adorn our river to have a sport like that on our own waterway. I'd like to invite you to change hats, knowing that you are also a man with some subject matter expertise uh, in planning matters. And I uh, invite you to speak in general terms about what represents commencement of a work, because I suspect that may become very germane to our debate at the conclusion of the public speakers. Uh, yes, yes, thank you, Councillor. I make a point clear that although being a lawyer for over 45 years, I am not legally representing Dragon Boats New South Wales. I am not representing the Windsor Water Sports. So I happen to be simply here as a Dragon Boat member of DBNSW, but also legally qualified. And I also, as most of you would know, I'm also a community representative of the Hawkesbury Planning Panel. And I've indicated in correspondence, I think to the general manager previously, that should this matter actually come before council um, and refer to the planning panel, I'd recuse myself from attending on that panel for purposes of uh, potential conflicts of interest. The issue quite squarely is this, as indicated by the president of uh, the, uh, Paddle Sports, there is history in this matter, not necessarily the uh, dealings with the um, plan of management, but dealing with the paddle boat and the organisation and the grant and council's role. I'm not revisiting that. I want to look forward. By taking it forward, we have to look at what works have been done. Not a lot, but what has been done, there's been a peg out. Now, the law has effectively changed, and I gave a commentary in a correspondence to the general manager um, earlier this year that stated, it's my personal and professional view that the peg out at the property site at Macquarie Park would, on the face of it, be sufficient commencement of works to enable a certificate of commencement for the DA. The law has changed back in 2020. Justice Tobias indicated effectively there has to be um, a genuine engagement of the works and not a sham. And that's why I made the earlier comment that this proposal to do the works, it's not a sham. This is a genuine organisation with funding, with a desire. The purpose that I raise is one could either read this down or you can read it up. Simply put, it's either a cup half full or a cup half empty. As a community representative, as somebody who's been in this chamber as a community representative, and I believe all of you as community representatives, would identify with the cup half full approach. That approach means that you need to have a generous heart, a brave heart on occasions, and embrace the reality that this needs to be read up that there needs to be an acknowledgement that there's been sufficient work, basic, a peg out, to be interpreted that the works have started. This organisation needs funding, it needs support, it needs your encouragement. If I may respond by saying, if I still wear my shirt here, if I may, councillor, if I could ask you all thinking about the opportunity, if you join me, in a paddle boat, where would we go paddling at the moment? You are the leaders of the Hawkesbury. The best place that I could take you to go paddling at the moment is in Penrith. Councillors, leaders of the Hawkesbury, paddling in Penrith. I'd like to be taking you down to our river, not far from here, in the Hawkesbury. 
It's a matter of your choice as to whether you see the opportunity to engage by way of it supporting the community and seeing the cup half full and seeing that the works that have been undertaken, broadly speaking, read up, not read down. Thank you, The Mr. law is not settled in this area. Thank you. I'll see if there's any further questions. Councillor Lyons-Bucket. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr Rogers. Um, I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm fully supportive of the Paddle Boat uh, Club, of course, having a clubhouse. Um, I'm just trying to get the relevance of the dragon boating. Is it that we don't have it here, the sole reason is because there's not a clubhouse? Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. Okay. If, effectively, we, we want to be here, but because of the size of the boat, it's not something you just put on the back of a trailer and take it home, yeah. and, and the amount of gear that's involved, it does need support and training. There's a lot of um, occupational health and safety type considerations in terms of, of training, so there needs to be a space for it. Okay, thank you. No further questions? Thank you, Mr Rogers. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Mayor, I have a formal word. No right of reply. Councillor Zamprogno. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and I hope that that was fruitful. Can I just state as the mover of this, um, my intent for point three is as Councillor Wheeler suggested. So the kind of assistance that I would expect Council to provide is includes uh, a, a letter explaining to the grant authority. Can I just ask, by the way, what the deadline on the grant is, not the deadline on the DA, but when the grant runs out. We're just finding that for you. Take it on notice. We'll have to take it on notice, sorry. We'll get that emailed out. We'll All right then, I was curious. And, and, and a related question, um, and we hear this often from community groups, so they get a, a sum of money and then there's some kind of enabling action that's required that costs money that they don't have. Um, and if it costs, you know, a five-figure sum to get a construction certificate, that, that's on the same order. Can I ask what action effectively unlocks the money and allows a claim on an instalment of the grant money itself? Is it the relevant landowner's consent? Is it commencement of the works? Is it the approval of a DA? I'm wondering why the group can't tap the grant money for these purposes. Uh, thank you. Councillor General Manager. Yeah. Um, that, there, that, I, I don't have the details on that, Councillor, because that's firstly, it's not our grant. Um, it, it's a grant to the club. Um, and second of all, each grant program typically va will vary on, on that. So, for example, um, some may, on execution of a funding deed, provide some sort of an upfront um, payment, maybe, say, 20%, something like that. There might be staged payments. Um, other grant funds say, nope, you're on your own, and then you claim it back at the end. It kind of varies. All right then. Look, I'll, I'll keep my right of reply very brief. This has been a lamentable situation and I hear the distress of the paddle boat community and the other partners that they brought on board to enable this grant in the first place when they say that their interactions with council have not been exemplary. And I'm not pointing the finger, but I'm saying we have to learn from this experience because this isn't the first time that a community group got a sum of money from another tier of government and then matters were grossly complicated because of their subsequent interactions with council. I accept the arguments that have been put to us this evening concerning you know, the difficulties of, of, of obtaining uh, Crown landowners' consent and I'm, I'm hopeful that part of what will happen moving forward should point two not be needed, that the relevant legal advice flows and that uh, council will spare no effort to badger the Crown lands people for the relevant landowners' consent because if the money's come from the state government and an, and an entity of the state government are standing in the way of something crucial, then you know we have to go into bat for community groups that have no specific expertise in planning law. Um, we we have to stand in the gap. So I'm, I'm I recognise that the, the items that are in the the motion are weak. They're as weak as water, but it's all we can do under the circumstances. But the discussion, I think, has been fruitful in providing direction to the community group about what they need to do to keep this alive. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. The motion is on the board. All those in favour, please raise your hand. 
In favour, Councillor Reardon, Councillor Weigel, <coughs> Councillor Sheather, Councillor Connolly, Councillor Kotlash, Councillor Dogramachi, Councillor Durek, Councillor Lyons Bucket, Councillor Willer, Councillor Zamprogno, and Councillor McMahon. Uh, Councillor Calvert is absent from the vote. I declare the item carried.